Hey everybody, today is February 2nd and it has been exactly two weeks since my last update. Today is going to be part four of the series and if you look at the plant's last update you may not recognize it today because it's probably double or triple in size. There are a few things I would like to cover today so I'll list some of the things first and then I'll go around and show you what the plants look like. I'm going to show you how fast they have grown since the previous video then I'll show you the feeding routine, what to do with these plants and how to train your roots to grow down. And I will be showing you some of the different size containers I'm using and how I get the roots to grow down to the bottom. Then I'm going to show off the clones and the fruits of the same plant that you saw last week that was fruiting. So I'll start with uh, showing you what the clone looked like. It's a pretty large plant by now because it's it's been here for a while and it's grown quite a bit. It's producing a lot of fruits and some of the fruits are looking beautiful. Look at that. Some of these ripened fruit. And many of these fruits are very different shapes. And I think it's because this plant has been crossed accidentally somehow when I had it outside. Because some fruits are round, some fruits are kind of square, some fruits have a stinger, and some are just smooth like that. But it's a very, very interesting tree. Look at that beautiful fruits back there. This one especially. Nice and bumpy with a tail there. This one here. Look at all the bumps on him. Okay, so that's my clone. Then here it is. My scotch bonnet. The yellow Jamaican scotch bonnet that I will be entering in the contest. If you look at this guy, last video is not this big, and look at the size of him now. Okay, all right. Then I'll show you the rest of them. Here's my Butch T Times Reaper. So as you notice, this guy is a little skinny, and if you see that the node from here to here is this, is seemed very extended. That's because this guy was hidden and lights couldn't get to it so it started to stretch so if you see that your plants are doing the same what well, this node and the next node are very far apart you want to give it more lights it should look like this very compact small nodes from one section to the next and this one is also very stretched you see from one node to the next is kinda tall so you don't want that so provided more light and it would do just fine Here's another example of a plant that has good light. You see, the, the notes are very compact and it's short and sturdy. So that's what you want it to look like. So this guy is the white devil's tail. The reason I put grafted is because I grafted the parent plant onto a scotch bonnet and that produced a white fruit. So I took that fruit and grew this to see if there's anything strange with that. The next one I have is the Butch Tetons Reaper, the same as that guy, but I separated it. And he was also lacking light, so I already solved the issue. Here's my Bahamian Goat, some of my favorite plants. And then the Chocolate Bootla, look at this. If you go back to the previous video, it's not this big. Let me show off the root system to you. Check that out. And then the other one, pretty good size there. So today, we'll, we'll also be cutting these off, which people call it topping. So I'm gonna be topping these off and show you the process and how it's done. So we'll do that next. Here's my Bleeding Borg 9, look very nice. Then I have my Jamaican Red Scotch Bonnet. Look at the size of this, guys. And it's already putting out buds right there. I will be topping this guy as well. Here's my J Red Ghost, looking nice. J's Peach Ghost times chocolate. And this is from Wayne on the Pepper Community. Thanks, buddy. I had five of these actually that sprouted and I gave three away. I'm keeping just two. MA Vortex from Jose, two of them. It's my Carolina Reaper, grow that guy every year. 
Seven pot bubble gum just sprouted. Two of them there. I think there should be a few more, but two is all I need. And this is my MOA Scotch bonnet. This is actually the same fruit that I collected off of this parent plant. So I cloned the parent plant, but I collected the seeds to grow this. It's my Butch T C P R, looking very nice. And this is the Ahi pineapple. And look what I did to this guy. It was probably like a foot high. I cut it off right there. And I used that part to graft onto my other Franken tree. It's a crazy looking tree with all kinds of different grafts. I'll show you that in the future. Here's Jay's Peach Ghost. Very nice variety here. I really like this variety. So very. Lo I'm looking forward to this. Here's more of the MA Vortex. I have two more. Total of four. Then Sugar Rush Peach from Dave. It's looking nice. These variety and the ahis are usually t much taller. It doesn't matter how much light you give it. It tend to just grow much taller than the regular super hots. And another MA Vortex. <laughs> so I have a total of six. Okay. And then finally the Trinidad Scorpion. Cardi. Just one of those. Okay, so that's pretty much all I'm growing. Next we will go in and show you how to train the plants to shoot roots to the bottom. That way it can develop a root system just like the one I show you right here. So we'll use this guy as our subject. My Jamaican Scotch Bonnet Yellow. So when the plants are around this size or a little bit smaller, the roots cannot reach the bottom there to get nutrients so you will still be feeding it from the top but you want the bottom roots to make contact with the nutrients so you just throw a little bit in there and then what you do is you shake it like this you make sure the water will splash up onto the roots you see how it drops down that's how you know that the water has made contact with the roots and when you do that it keeps the roots moist and the roots will eventually shoot down into the reservoir and it will do fine but if you leave it suspended in midair it will dry up and it will create like a dark spot at the tip you don't want to do that so that's, that's what I usually do to train it I just give it a little nutrient shake it up like this and then the roots will make contact and then in a few days it'll grow more roots and probably in a week and a week and a half the roots will eventually reach the bottom and then you don't have to do that anymore so for a large cup that's how I train the roots to grow down for the smaller cup there's no need to do that because the roots is already in that little spot so you just pour some nutrients in there and put the cup back and it should be fine. So the various size that I'm using are the styrofoam cups. I like using these because there's a lot of space for the roots to grow down. So in this size cup, the plants can get quite large and if you let it go, it can actually start producing and grow just in that cup itself. Like my tie here. It's just the same Chick-fil-A cup. And I've harvested so many fruits off of this guys already. So, see this guy is starting to turn red. I'm doing a lot of work with this guy, so I usually harvest the fruits early. Check this out, so that I can promote the other ones to ripen the one that I want. If you see that it start to slightly turn color, cut that off. And when you do that, it'll start to focus its energy on the next set of fruit to to ripen. So this is exactly what I did. And if you cut it early, don't worry. If you just leave it in room temperature for a few days, it will start to turn red. So the fruit will continue to ripen off the plant. But you cannot cut the one that are too young because the young ones will not ripen. It will just rot if you leave it outside for too long. Alright, so next thing we'll do is we're going to top some of these plants because they're getting too big and... I'm just running out of space so let me show you the process I'm gonna do two with it today I'm gonna do the Jamaican red 
scotch bonnet and I'm gonna do this chocolate bootleg because I'm not ready for this guy to set fruit in this small cup you see there's buds there I don't want this guy to set fruit yet because I have a few more months before it can go outside so I'm gonna cut it back and let it start over so let's do that right now okay so here's my scissors this is what I'm gonna use make sure the scissors are clean I made a topping video so if you have not seen that I will link you topping is very simple usually I would cut the plant right under the Y where it splits into a Y and that's exactly the time when the buds are starting to come out as well so the Y is where you usually want to cut it but since I want to delay this much further I'm gonna cut it in half just like I did to the ahi pineapple don't worry about this it's fine it, it seems a little crazy that you just cut the plant in half like this and it hurt every single time because it's very it's tough for me to cut these off but yeah that's that's really how you do it and this one as well just cut this in half there you go and on top of that you can go ahead and get rid of some of these bottom leaves here so what this will do is set the plants back into growth so it doesn't bloom for a while Now you don't want to cut all the leaves off because the plants need that for photosynthesis. And when you do this, you can you will also have to cut back on the watering because there's not much left of it to use up all the water at the bottom. So you have to cut back for a while until it start to to produce the side shoots. And when the side shoots come out and become larger, you can go ahead and get rid of the larger leaves. But I'll show you uh, how to do that when we get there so there it is nothing left of this plant and for the new people that have not seen the video uh, let's just go ahead and show you how I feed the plant and the double cup method the root will shoot down to the bottom when it gets to about this size and all you have to do is pour a little bit of nutrients like that in the bottom and then put the plants back and the roots will train that up very very quickly for a smaller size plant you have to continue to water from the top but for larger plants like this there's no need to feed the plants from the top anymore but you have to provide more nutrients so that it'll be enough for the plants to use for for the whole day and that's everything for this video this week. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like, subscribe, comment, and check out in the description. I will post many information there. Also, to the link to our Google community if you want to join and uh, just hang out and talk about peppers all day long. Alright, thank you for watching and see you guys in the next videos.